Okay, let's have a look at this one. For the following exercise, consider two non-negative numbers x and y. I guess so. One of them could be zero. Maximize and minimize. Maximize and minimize the quantity. So okay, three, three, seven. So that's x times ten minus x. That's ten x minus x squared. Let's call it set. So dz dx equals 10 minus 2x, which equals 5. So that means x equals y equals 5. And if we calculate the second derivative, that's minus 2, which makes it a max. So then the one of the boundaries, either 0, 10, or 10, 0. So 0 and 10 would be a min. Then the max is 5 and 5. And it could be either way around 10 or 0. It's just the symmetry in all these answers. Um, actually, I can get the answers open as we go along. Five five zero yeah mm -hmm. okay three three eight so that's um x squared times ten minus x squared so that's x squared times a hundred minus twenty x plus x squared so that's a hundred x squared minus twenty x cubed plus x power four. So the derivative is 200x minus 60x squared plus 4x cubed equals 0. I can take out the x, and I'm left with 4x squared minus 60x plus 200. Actually, I could have taken out the 4. 4x is x squared minus 15x plus 50. Um, 4x... x minus 10 x minus 5 so we have three answers to look at the second derivative is 200 minus 120 x plus 12 x squared so we can have 0 10 10 0 which is basically the same thing Um, and then 5, 5. So if I put in 0, 10, that's obviously a minimum because of the 0 minimum. So, okay, 3, 3, 9. That's 10 minus x minus 1 over x. So the derivative is minus 1 plus 1 over x squared equals 0. So that means uh, x has to equal plus or minus 1. So x could be 1 or oh, it can't be minus 1. So it's just 1, 9. We also have to check out 0, 10. No, we can't actually put a 0 in. So there is no boundary to check. So it's just 1, 9. And the second derivative is minus 2 over x cubed, which is a negative. So this surely must be a x um, um, uh, nine minus yes no what nine minus one What about zero? Oh, we could have the other extreme. We might have to look at x could be 10 and y could be 0. So that would be the max. So what answer is this then? The minimum. The minimum. I'd want to make this is the minimum. But it's only a local minimum. 
the y is 9, the x is 1. It's only a local min because um, you could push the x. They're not necessarily integers, are they? So you could push the x closer to 0, make it even smaller. Maybe there's no answer for it. Oh, no, there is for that one, 239. Okay, let's, we can check now in a moment. And then x squared minus y. Well, again, we can kind of see at the boundary what's going to happen. So, like, if you put in x is 10 and y is 0, that's going to have to be a max. And then in the other direction, you put in x is 0, y is 10, that's going to have to be a min. I mean, there's no point in, I mean, nothing in the middle between 0 and 10 is going to change that fact. So I think this one's just doesn't even require calculus. Let's check the answers if we can. Okay, 337, 550, 10, 10, 0. Okay, so that's fine. And then 339, 19, minimal, none. So maximum, they said, is 19. But 10, 0 would be the maximum. Wouldn't it? Because of 239, if, uh, if you use 1, 9, for example, the x is 1. The, what, are they, what are they saying? 1, 9 is the maximum. Why is that the maximum? Because if I put in 9, 1, I'll get 8. But if I put in what they suggested, 1, 9, that's 1 minus a ninth. So, so that, that surely must be wrong. 10, 0 is the max. And 1, 9, no, that can't be the max. Let's open up a graph in software. Graphing time. So, anyways, that's that's right. That's the min, and then that's the max. So that's definitely right. Uh, this one here, I'm pretty sure zero ten and ten zero being the mins are right because there, there'll be zero in both cases, and the max has to be this has to be symmetry here. So I'm pretty confident about that. Don't need to check that one. For the last one, so these last two, uh, I'll need to check. Again, this one I'm pretty confident about because to maximize this, you'd want to make this big and that small. So that has to be 10, 0. And to minimize it, it's the exact opposite. And I can't see how any value in the middle would change that fact. So, should check out tree tree 9. So y, which is 10 minus x minus 1 over x. Okay, let's graph that. So, hmm, I must have done something wrong. It does look like a max there. X is 1, so... What have I done wrong here? 10 minus x minus 1 over x. So that's minus 1. So if I calculate. Why did, why did I think this is what we've done wrong here? Okay. That's a negative, so that makes it a max. So put in 10. 10, 0 is definitely a min. 
um, in tree tree nine, because if you put in ten, if you put in zero here, and ten here, it's a negative. You can see it on the graph. But, oh, oh, I guess technically this is shooting down to infinity. So it's not even a local or global min. Okay, so fair enough. Okay, I guess I do agree with them. There isn't a min. And the max is 1, 9. It's negative, so that makes it a max. So I don't know why I thought it was a min. Maybe this was confusing me. Okay, so, okay, that's right now. So now I better check the last one since my intuition failed me. I just I'm exhausted. Uh, x squared minus 10 minus x. Yeah, okay, so the minimum is one of them still has to be zero. Yeah, and then the maximum is the 10 one. Yeah, okay, so that one is right. So that's right, that's right. And I'm pretty sure this one has to be right, but let's just double check it since we're here. X squared times 10 minus X. Oh, X squared. So minimums at zero and ten on the x, yep, and then the maximum five five. Okay, so yeah, I'm completely happy now that those four questions are right and the two match the back anyway. So I think, yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good.